Yes, I understand that every life must stand on. As we sit alone, I know someday we must go on. Oh, I'm a lucky man to count on both hands the ones I've loved. Some folks just have one, yeah, others they got none uh -huh. Stay with me, oh, let's just breathe Practice all your skills Never let them win uh -huh. Under all my gear Just another hockey player uh -huh. I don't want you to hurt There's so much more left in this world Stay with me Did I say that I need you? Did I say that I want you? Oh, if I didn't, I'm a fool, you see. No one knows this more than me. As I come clean, I wonder every day as I look upon your face. Everything you gave and nothing you would take, oh no Nothing you would take Everything you gave Did I say that I need you? Did I say that I want you? Oh, if I didn't, I'm a fool no one knows this more than me As I come clean Every shift you take Hello everyone. Just a couple of housekeeping things before we start. The washrooms are right here. The elevator, access elevator is in the corner. The steps to the upstairs is right over here. Um, everyone's welcome after the ceremony to uh, come upstairs and have some refreshments. Um, Uh, I'm Steve Blackmore. Uh, I'm a friend of the family's, and I'm honored to be asked to do, to, do, to do this on behalf of the family. And the family wants to thank everybody for showing up today. And uh, on Andrew's behalf, what can I say? I met Andrew about eight or nine years ago. Um, I heard about. I watched him play hockey, but at a younger age, but I met him as he played for the Cavalier volleyball team, and uh, my first impression of Andrew was 
here's a volleyball team losing 15-2 in a game, and uh, <laughs> he slides to the wall to save a ball, and you know, just never quit, and I think everybody here knows that of Andrew. Um, another memory of Andrew was at the Red Cup High School Hockey Tournament in Sydney. Um, 500 people jammed on a Saturday night playing the home team, the Riverview Redmen, all in red and white, and the Sackville Kingfishers are there, and uh, it goes to overtime. And uh, I just remember to this day, Andrew never had a cocky bone in his body, but you know, the timing was just perfect. Uh, he scored the overtime goal, and he just goes over to the crowd and just does it, you know? smile from here to here and right through his mask as you all know his smile and uh, it was pretty memorable moment I, I know for for him and I'm sure the whole but for for me too it's like you know it was it was it was a good night um, uh, if I could sum up in four words Andrew Pico peaks um, Intelligent, competitive, charming with that smile, and fearless. And that all adds up to a, a leader by example. Um, I'm going to turn this over to uh, John Sears, but before I do that, there's one change in the, in the format here, a tribute to Andrew. Uh, Aunt Julie's going to speak before Marshall Owen, just to let you know. Um, so, uh, John, thank you. Of course, you can hear the fart game in the background. Did you just do that? I love Sackville. <laughs> I gotta be honest with you right now, it's an honor to do this, and uh, I'm coming off of 10 days on the road, so uh, my voice might, may sound a little gravelly.
For those of you who don't know me, I'm Andrew's Aunt Julie. On behalf of Andre, Jana, and our entire family, I'd like to give a sincere thank you to everyone for their continuous support. Today's celebration is due to the hard work of friends and our entire community. We are truly grateful. On July 16th, 2019, our family chain was broken leaving us with a feeling of loss and grief we never thought imaginable. Although nothing can ease our pain, we have found comfort in everyone's kind words, reading your Facebook posts, and seeing how much Andrew is loved and respected by all who know him. Andrew's love for adventure, sports, being part of a team, and continuously being on the move started from the very beginning. When Andrew was just two and a half, we embarked on one of many family trips. Andrew spent hours one day sitting at a picnic table, watching a group of teenagers play baseball, not understanding why they wouldn't ask him to play. Didn't they know he had played in his backyard before? I think one of the moms finally felt so bad, she convinced her son to ask him if he'd like to take a turn hitting the ball. Well, out popped that soother, and he was smiling ear to ear. We all sat at the picnic table to watch him have his turn, and to everyone's surprise, especially those teenagers, of course, he hit a home run on his first swing. As everyone watched the ball soaring through the sky, the older boys started yelling, run home, run home. Andrew dropped that bat and started to run, running right past us in the opposite direction of where he should have been going. <laughs> Jana, Andrew said, Andrew, where are you going? Without stopping, he turned to us with that famous smile and said, to our tent, they told me to run home. <laughs> that smile and the sheer pride across his face will forever be imprinted in my mind. That was the same year we had a wedding. Andrew was given the task of ring bearer and trying to make sure Chloe stayed by his side walking down that aisle. He decided that this was an important role needed to be, in his words, a big boy. Julie, he said, I'm going to stop using my soother before your wedding so I can be a big boy. And Andrew loved that soother. But sure enough, like everything else Andrew had set his mind to in the years to come, he would achieve and he gave up that much loved soother. That night during our dance, we watched Andrew with his four-year-old charm gather all the ladies onto the dance floor and he danced until the lights came on, his favorite song being I Like Big Butts. Jen and Andre had to wrap cold cloths around his feet that night due to his complaints of for- sore feet from all of his dancing. Anyone who has been fortunate enough to spend any time with Andrew knows never to be surprised by anything he says, sometimes being honest to a fault. He always had a way to make us laugh while sometimes shaking our head. When Allie, Andrew's sister, first began dating her fiancé Mitch, Andrew was only 13, but I guess as Ali's brother, he felt he needed to look out for. He looked at Mitch and said, what are your intentions with my sister? He's never one to beat around the bush. Just this past winter, I had asked Andrew if he could tutor Zach in math and English, a direct quote from our text conversation. Hmm, I don't know about tutoring him English. I think I low-key need an English tutor. 
During one of their math tutoring sessions, I came into the room to check on them and heard Andrew giving this advice. If you're going to shave your area, you need a good razor and make sure you go in the right direction. <laughs> Keep in mind the exact words he used, I have cleaned up a little. I looked at him and all I could say was, seriously? <laughs> he looked back and informed me that I didn't need to pay for that advice, he threw it in for free. <laughs> this year while on vacation in Florida, Andrew and Chloe adventured to Miami Beach themselves on a train. While packing a little bag of necessities for the day, they decide to only bring a small amount of cash to cover food and a souvenir. So their cash flow was very limited. When re they returned home and told us all about their day, Andrew said, I was 10 bucks short on money. I gave it to some man trans train station. We all turned and asked him why, and Chloe chuckled. Well, he walked up to me, and he had an oxygen tank to help him breathe. He asked me what kind of person I was, and I asked him what he meant. He said, are you a kind person? Would you help someone out in need? Andrew told him, yes, I believe I am a kind person who would help someone. And the man asked for some spare change. Andrew gave him $10 of his limited funds. Now Chloe and Andrew both began to laugh, and we really didn't understand what was so funny. Andrew continued with the story. Well, he said, he wasn't actually hooked up to the oxygen. And he left the train station with my $10 and no oxygen tank. I think he scammed me. <laughs> he may have got your $10, Andrew, but in that moment, you showed a complete stranger who you were and demonstrated how basic human kindness should be how we all live our lives. Andrew was never one to shy away from trying anything new. It often appeared things came easily for him and that he excelled at everything. But the reality is, it was his willingness to just give things a try that he truly excelled at. If you were ever in a situation where you feel you don't want to try something for fear of failure, please use Andrew as an example. He was the definition of you miss all the shots you never take. All of the memories we have will be cherished forever. As a family, we will forever be proud of the person he is. He truly is an example of everything good in this world. I heard a pastor recently say, our goal while here on earth should be to leave this world a better place than how we entered it. Without a doubt, Andrew has done this. His energy, determination, drive, passion for life, his kindness and big heart have positively impacted everyone who knows him. Even though we can no longer embrace him, pick up the phone to call him, or help Nana go on the hunt at every night storm in Florida looking for those sneakers he had to have. I do know without a doubt he is with us. He is part of everything beautiful we have yet to experience. His light will never fade and his infectious smile will continue to brighten our day every time we think of him. I just have a little verse I'd like to read as a reminder to everyone that he was watching over us all, smiling his beautiful smile until we see him again. The story of love and light. Where do you go when you leave us at night? A child once questioned the sun. You fill up our lives with warmness and light, but then when you go, we have none. I'm still shining bright, but in a new place. The sun kindly answered and smiled. But though you don't see me, I promise you this, I'm all around you, my child. I'm the radiant glow that colors the sky long after I've slipped out of view. I'm the warmth in the earth and life in the flower that quietly blossoms for you. And even at night, I shine on the moon, a promise I hope you will see. So you know in your heart that my love and my light are with you and always will be. We love you so much, Andrew, and our family chain will link again. Thank you. Next, we have uh, Marshall Owen. Say a few words for Andrew.
for those of you who do not know my name, my name is Marshall Owen, and I'm honored to call Andrew my best friend. To be honest, I don't recall when mine and Andrew's friendship started, but it seemed like a lifetime ago. Growing up with Andrew was a gift I'm glad I was given. I'll never forget the time we spent together and the memories we made. We had countless sleepovers growing up. I won't forget the hours we spent in the basement of your old house, playing PlayStation or having a 1v1 Airsoft 4. Having to get on our bikes to go to Avery's and get our favorite snacks, whether it was the sour cream and onion chips and onion dip. I remember the first day of grade eight, we had a new teacher in for health class. You convinced her that your name was Andy. He loved making people laugh and he loved his friends. I remember a time Andrew may have ditched a few plans to spend a weekend away with me to watch me play volleyball. Andrew was always down for anything. It could be teaching me to drive a standard or trying on a bikini top. <laughs> the summer of 2016 has a special place in my heart because almost every day that summer, as soon as he would get off work, he would text me. He would text me saying he's on his way to come pick me up to do anything or everything, but our go-to was going to play basketball to swimming at the Malloy's house. It was Andrew's personality that made these times so memorable. Andrew was always gave his 100% effort, whether it was in video games, sports, or trying to make people happy. His smile and laughter would always lighten up your day no matter what. Andrew had a big heart. He always wanted the best for his friends, his family, and everyone in his life. No matter what he encountered in his life, he would try to make the best of it. He strived to make things better, including his relationship with his friends and family and any challenges he took on throughout that. He believed in living his life to the fullest and would never give up. Andrew was passionate about everything he did in every relationship he had. His laughter would fill your heart with joy and his ideas would fill your brain with confusion. My life has been changed for the better because of Andrew was in it. His friendship has been a blessing in my life. I will miss you, Andrew, and I love you. Hello. For those of you who don't know me, I am Carlene. And my husband, Bob, and our son, Mitchell, were blessed to be Andrew's billet family last year. I still remember that August day when we first met Andrew, Jana, and Andre at the Appledome Rink in Berwick. We as a hockey family were pretty familiar with hockey billets becoming part of our family. They usually showed up with a hockey bag, a suitcase, and of course, the dress clothes. Andrew was different right from the start. He pulled into the yard in his new little gray Toyota Corolla, and out of that little car came everything. <laughs> from suitcases to three garment bags, not one. Sneakers, I can only begin. Pillows, TV, PlayStation, and a computer. I soon thought he would never come out of his room that soon changed. Andrew had a lot on his plate that year. He was to play junior A hockey. He was an honor student in grade 12, had to volunteer in our hometown of Berwick with the junior A program, work out, and be a kid somewhere in there. But one thing was apparent right from the start. Whenever Andrew had a little break in his busy schedule, home to Sackville, he would go to be with his family and friends who Andrew held very dear to his heart. Our fondest memories of Andrew will be of him becoming part of our family. Andrew and Mitchell bonded right from the start. Being of the same age, playing hockey, grade 12 year, and having family ties to Newfoundland, those boys hit it off. Andrew became a farmer that year. See, we live on a cattle farm. 
Andrew helped out with chores and chipped in with whatever had to be done. Andrew also came with a farm appetite. From steak, chicken, and turkey grown on our farm, from salmon, eggs, hot wings, fettuccine, and who could forget the hot Frank sauce? Well, did you know that Frank's hot sauce goes with everything from breakfast, lunch, to supper? Andrew, we thank you for your laughter, friendship, determination, wit, and of course, sportsmanship. And it would not go without saying, thanks for introducing Fortnite to our household. <laughs> wow. I think we now own shares in the Duracell Battery Company. Andrew, above all, what makes your smile, we could not know. Because we figured that you lived life to the fullest. That smile will live on. We can shed tears that you are gone, or we can smile because you lived. We can close our eyes and pray that you will come back, or we can open our eyes and see all that you have lived. Our hearts can be empty because we can't see you, or we can be full of love that we all once shared. We can turn our back on tomorrow and live yesterday, or we can be happy for tomorrow because of yesterday. We can remember you and only that you are gone, or we can cherish your memory and let it live on. We can cry and close our mind, be empty and turn back, or we can do what you would want us to do, Andrew. Smile, open our eyes, love, cherish all those memories and keep them close to our hearts because your, your memory, Andrew, was meant to last a lifetime. It's amazing how you speak back to now. Will I say in a word that I put out? Try as I may. Look 
I just have to say thank you to Jana for being one of my biggest fans. Now we're going to call uh, Brett Furge, friend and teammate, a tribute to Andrew. Hi everyone. <clears throat> For those of you that don't know me, my name is Brett Verge. First off, I would like to start by sending my condolences to Jana, Andre, Nick, and all of Andrew's family, and thanking them for asking me to be here today to say a few words on Andrew's behalf about him as a person and our friendship we had. I'm honored to do so, and it means a lot to me to be here today. Andrew and I have been best friends since we were about three years old. We went to preschool together and started playing hockey together and have been best of friends ever since. We played hockey together just about every year growing up until we got to high school and started to play against one another. We always had a very inseparable friendship, no matter how much time we spent together or apart. Nothing was ever different. We kept the same connection over the years and never questioned it, and we both knew that. Playing hockey with Andrew is part of some of my best memories with him. From learning how to skate together to playing on the same team for most years of our youth hockey, Andrew was always a hardworking, grinding in the corners, getting it done kind of player. He never gave up on a play, <clears throat> and would block any shot coming his way or one that he could get in the way of. I remember one time at Bantam, it was, I believe, Andrew blocked quite the slap shot, and he came to the bench, still smiling, of course, saying his leg hurt. He took off his sock over his shin pad, and the shot had cracked his shin pad right through. He took off the shin pad and had a big bruise and a cut just under his knee. He looks up smiling and says, oh, cool. <laughs> the trainer looked at it, and said that he was all right, and Andrew put his gear back on and waited for his next shift. I think that says a lot about his character as a hockey player and as a person away from the hockey world. Andrew had such a big heart on and off the ice and always showed that in how he lived life and by how he treated the people around him. Andrew's personality is something that really stood out to people about him. Always so happy, positive, joyful, and just all around friendly and excited to be with people. He always treated everyone with respect, love, and affection, and really showed that he cared. I remember even times when I would try to get him to be mad or get mad with someone when he should have been, and he just wouldn't. It wasn't him. Andrew's smile is the main thing about him that everyone recognizes. Ear to ear, big white teeth smile at all times. I remember one year in the play on ball hockey tournament, we lost in our elimination game, and there's pictures of us afterwards. A couple of the guys were upset. And under the tears, there's Andrew's smile, still trying to come out. His laugh is another thing. Happy, joyful, and genuine laugh that he always expressed, and everyone around him loved it. Andrew's smile and laugh would light up any room he walked into and fill it with joy. That's just the way he came off on people and the impact that he left on them. <clears throat> Excuse me. Being friends with Andrew for so long is something very special to me. Andrew was never just a guy you played hockey with or someone at school. He was a best friend and a memorable friend to everyone he knew and was close with. Andrew left so many positive impacts and impressions on the people he met, parents, kids, and family members, as I know he has touched so many in my family. He was always so kind and respectful and made others enjoy their time with him. Thinking back on hockey memories and ones that really show what Andrew was like and what our friendship was like is easy as there are so many. However, one of my favorites as it really shows these things, is when one time in a tryout one year, we were in a scrimmage game and got put on different teams and we were playing against one another. And to anyone that knows me, I was never a hitter. Andrew was coming up the wing at his own end, waiting for the pass from the D. And I saw the opportunity and stepped in and hit him. And as Andrew was getting up, we both went to skate away. I was apologizing for the hit on him and he was congratulating me for it. He was telling me not to apologize, saying it was a nice play and showing how happy he was for me. That just shows to me a lot about Andrew and how he, had ne he was never jealous or had any jealousy towards people in situations involving him. He was genuinely happy for their success and enjoyed being a part of it. He was happy for me and nothing mattered to him. This is a lot about his character. Some other things that I think of often are the times when Andrew, his brother Nick and I would all hang out as Nick and I were also very close friends. We would play road hockey and mini sticks a lot, of course. Andrew was always a phenomenal goalie, and Nick and I would do our best to score. 
with Nick probably having some more luck than I did. Or the time when one night Andrew and Sean Miller stayed the night at my house and being immature kids got my sister to take us out in her car to go play Ding Dong Ditch. In one house, my sister and I particularly selected and warned the guys of, Andrew offered to do it himself for the fun of it. We moved the car down the road and let him out to go do it and waited for him so we could drive away without the car being seen. After a few minutes, all we could see out of the back window is Andrew running for the car at full speed. And you could see him smiling in the dark, <laughs> excuse me, smiling in the dark and laughing the whole way to the car. He jumps in the back seat laughing and panting, yelling, drive, drive, drive and he thought it was hilarious. Those moments are fun to think back on, of doing stupid things, being kids, and having fun together, laughing and enjoying the moment. Growing up, another connection we had together and both held very closely to one another is sharing the same favorite NHL team and player, the Calgary Flames and Jerome McGinley. We found this exciting to have together, and as there not being many Flames fans around, it was also great to have another one with you. I know we both admire Jerome McGinley a lot, <clears throat> for many of the same reasons, and I believe Andrew really exemplified that in how he lived life and played hockey. Andrew always gave everything his all. He put 110% effort into everything he did and always had such a big heart in life. Andrew was dedicated to what he set his mind to and did what it took to achieve it. Andrew's playing style was very similar to that of Drum McGinley's. Worked hard, led by example, on and off the ice. Did what it took to win, and when a big moment or goal was needed, he was able to be there to provide that, and doing all of this with, of course, the big happy smile on his face. One of my favorite memories and things that we did together that means a lot to me, and I know did to him as well, is about from the junior high age. Andrew and I made a promise that we would always be friends, and promised that no matter what, no matter how long we spent apart, or how far apart that we were, that we would be each other's best man at our weddings. At a young age, it seemed so naive and silly to think, but even over the years, we would continue to talk about it and joke. But we were serious as well. We both felt the same and felt that it would be exciting and only right to do so, given how close we always were for so long. That is something that I planned on honoring and have told so many people about and always think of as such a fond memory. Andrew always made everyone around him feel welcome and happy with his big, loving personality. Something that shows us as well it was from recently when just a few weeks ago, downtown Halifax, Andrew and I were together and we were both so, so excited to see one another as it had been a little too long for our likings. He met some of my friends that he hadn't yet and got the chance to meet my girlfriend, Mackenzie. He walked up to her with a smile on his face and said, hi, I'm Andrew, Brett's best friend, and I'm going to be his best man at his wedding one day. <laughs> she smiled and laughed and told him that she knew of that promise as well. That was special for all of us, and I think really shows how close we were and what we meant to each other and just how positive things always were between us. Andrew's positivity, polite, respectful, happy, and enjoying life personality is something that I've always admired and thought was very important to how he always was. He treated everyone the same and was always so kind and generous to those around him. Whether it was to have a laugh with them, help them with something, or to just be a friend, Andrew was there for everyone, and everyone around him always enjoyed their time with him and loved him as a person and a friend, and for so many here, an amazing teammate, a brother, most would say. I'd like to send my best wishes to Andrew's family. Thank you. Right from game one that I played, you just know he, he's one of the leaders in the room. He's got everyone's back, you know, he's got his rituals and, you know, don't get in the way of guys' rituals and, you know, and he makes sure that you don't get in the way of other guys' rituals. That's, uh, that's how committed he was and uh, just had heart, like 200 foot game. He just, I don't know, he's just a great guy. I can't say much else about him. He's had a contagious smile, like, uh, like, I miss him. There wasn't one person in this world that lit up a room like his smile did. And uh, that's just one thing everybody will remember about Andrew. He was a great guy, great teammate. He was a brother, he was a friend uh, to all of us. And uh, he definitely will be missed. And uh, I definitely love you, buddy. Uh, he was just one of those charismatic guys who was just always had a smile on his face. He was just always that guy you could count on. It's not every day that you can meet somebody that can brighten up the whole room just by being in it. And for that, I'll never forget you. Thank you, Andrew. Andrew was 
the complete warrior, ultimate competitor from childhood to late teens, and he could brighten up any room he walked in just with a simple smile. He would work in the corner for two minutes straight and come up with a smile still on his face, and even if you were on his line and you did something wrong, he would let you know, and you couldn't even get mad at him, you couldn't say nothing, because he knew how to say it, and he was the man for that. If I could talk to Andrew right now, I would say that I miss you, and you were an amazing part of my life, and I'll always, you'll always be in my heart. Growing up, it was always a treat to play with him because of the way he was, his attitude, and he was always pushing to be better, and you know, pushing other guys to be better. The way he was on and off the ice was one of a kind. Never ever was he out of line. He always respected who needed to be respected and you know he was a very well respected guy. Just the way that he carried himself off the ice and on the ice and you know he was just a really really smart kid and you don't, you don't find that very often in a complete package like that so. Hard worker, very hard worker and really reliable teammate. Um, one of those guys that you could kind of always count on to give 100% effort and cared a lot. Great person and didn't, uh, didn't ever do anything bad in his life basically, but as I said, the good ones seem to always go first and it's unfortunate that uh, that's what happened with him, of course. Whenever we went on away trips, he would sit at the front of the bus and he was always focused. He couldn't distract him in any way. He wouldn't talk to anybody. He was pure concentrated on the game. He brought that like throughout everything he did, whether it was sports, like friendships, like anything. His heart was just as big as a smile. I just, you know, like want to see that big smile that he had and hear that laugh. And I definitely tell him I loved him, for sure. He was very easy going, very approachable. Never uh, like looked down on anyone. Andrew was a very contagious guy from his smile and laugh to his work ethic on and off the ice. The best gun person you can get. Uh, he was always there for everyone that he knew, everyone he was close with. He wasn't just a teammate or a buddy at school. Andrew was special to everyone he knew. Uh, I love you, man. Always be my best man. A first line grind kind of guy. He had uh, one of the grittiest guys out there, but also had some of the best skill on the team and was always one of the hardest working guys out there. He was just always smiling and always loving what he was doing, and he's one of the he's one of the best guys that I know. And great teammate, great guy all around. Through all the years I've known him, it was just it wasn't enough time. Andrew was like a a heartwarming guy, like on and off the ice. He just you'll you'll never forget that smile on his face. I just want one last chance to to tell him that how much he means to everybody and that he's just, just such a great guy and, and, and everybody's going to miss him. Everybody wanted to play like him. Um, that's what made our team so successful this year. Uh, not only was he an unbelievable hockey player, but the, the guy he was um, made everyone's day better. He was a great leader and he'll be missed very much. I love you, brother. He played a massive part in uh... Our, our team's success this year on and off the ice, you know. It's just hard to find guys that work like that and have the skill to actually make a difference. Our team next year will for sure make sure everyone knows how great of a guy Andrew was. Pigo's legacy will live on forever with the Blazers. Andrew was 100% a full-time beauty at all times. He's honestly just generally the most kind-hearted friend you could ask for. On the ice, he was, he was 100% of the time the hardest worker out there, he just, he would work, his will to win was incredible and then on the ball hockey side of things he might have been the best ball hockey goalie I've ever seen in my life. Everything he did was so positive and it was so fun, it was just uh, he could walk in a room and you'd just smile because yeah, his positive attitude was just something else. I just wanted to know how, how privileged I feel to have so many great memories with him and it's something I'll never forget and just, I love you. He's a full beauty, <laughs> completely. He is, and he's a full, like, full package as a hockey player. He's one of the best on the ice and the best guy off the ice in the room. He's a person that everyone should strive to be on and off the ice. Every kid should try to be like him. 
I love him, and I, he always, he's just always been one of the best guys I've ever met in my life, so. It's the definition of a guy that would play for the front of the jersey, not the back. You couldn't ask for a better thing of a teammate. Off the ice, he was always a funny guy, responsible. Just always trying to be responsible and keep us clean. We'd call him our dad, kind of. <laughs> Thanks for leaving a positive impact on so many people. You'll never be forgotten. He was always impacting people's lives, um, making things better for them. He had a part in shaping who I am today, um, giving me, even though we're the same age, giving me someone to look up to, someone to try and shape my game around myself and make me who I kind of want to be as well. There's not a minute that I would want to take away that I had with him. Every minute with him was so special and just, I just would wish I could tell him and let him know that and let him know how it wasn't just with me, it was with anyone, that everyone felt that way about him. Hello everyone, uh, I'm Dwight Dempster. Me and Andrew were part of the same hockey team this past year, the Sackville Blazers. And as we saw on the screen, there's many members of the team here today, both in the stands and of course, Andrew's hockey brothers on the bench. You know, we're here today as a team to celebrate many of the memories that Andrew left with us. But of course, we're also here to recognize that Andrew has has moved on to his new team of hockey gods that watch over us in this arena. Andrew, uh, to do a quick rundown of Andrew's time with the team and it will display his importance. Andrew started with the team last September and Andrew was one of the youngest players on the team and although he was new to the team, it quickly became established that Andrew would be part of the leadership group as one of the captains. Now, Andrew, of course, we all know how driven Andrew is. So being captain was not good enough for him. Andrew also wanted to do some of the coaching. And a couple incidents where these came out. The, the coaches were approached about uh, the captains running a practice, which I guess Andrew felt the team had more to give, and he was right. And he felt like he was the man to help pull it out. And, you know, in hockey, uh, the team's only going to go as far as the leadership can carry it. And being coaches that promote leadership, we were all for that practice. So the practice gets set up. It's 80 minutes, an hour and a half, maybe four drills. And Andrew shows up with somewhere in the lines of 185 pages of notes. That's Andrew, that's a lot of notes. And then Andrew proceeds to review these notes with us before the next game. And you know, although we may not have used the notes for long and maybe, maybe we didn't even understand those notes, <laughs> um, the preparation, the leadership, the character that Andrew showed at that time, it certainly spoke volumes on who Andrew was, how important the team was to him, and how important he was to the team. An incident just right after that, to again, Andrew can display his coaching abilities. Um, one of our players did something very selfish in a game and basically took away our opportunity to win a game. And I was pretty hot after the game. So I went in the dressing room, gave the player a blast, which is something I very rarely do in front of teammates. And as I find out, I didn't really have to because Coach Pico had already taken care of that. <laughs> so the, the, the actions surrounding those two situations is no doubt the turning point in our season this year that ended with great memories. And it was Andrew's leadership and character that enabled us through those times to land here on this floor just a few months ago, having celebrations. 
As far as individual memories of Andrew, uh, I can easily picture him. There's no doubt I can hear his voice. And of course, I will never forget the person that he is. And we're here to celebrate some memories. And I have the microphone, so that means I have to come up with some. As far as being able to see Andrew so easily, I'm going to have to draw this picture for you, and you're going to have to put yourself in Andrew's shoes. Before game six of East Hans, I gave a pregame speech that was about as unusual as you'll ever hear in a hockey dressing room. You see, we were in a spot that we weren't supposed to be in. An opportunity to knock East Hans out of the playoffs, win the division, and move on. So Andrew and the boys were all a little more nervous than what they needed to be. So the coaches, the real coaches, not Andrew, <laughs> had to get our messages across, however, do it in a way that would distract from the situation at hand. So I went off on a 12-minute rant about being 15 years old on a playground here in Sackville. At the time, I started taking a liking to the girls. So that's the scenario Andrew's sitting in through. And so at the start, back to Andrew's looks. Now, for people that were worried in the stands, I did change the names of the people on the playground and they may have coincidentally changed to represent some of the names of the East Hands players. But Andrew started out the story by looking at me. You know, Andrew doesn't hide his thoughts. And whether it's vocal or whether it's through his face, he tells you what he thinks. So as the story starts, Andrew has that confused look on his face, and there's many of those around the room. And Andrew's basically telling me through his looks, what the hell is this idiot talking about? <laughs> That's the part I don't want to remember. But as we go on and on, the story goes on and on and on, Andrew's eyes just kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And his smile just kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And, you know, he was across the room from me, but it seemed like he was only inches away. It was Andrew's perfect combination of the big eyes of learning and the big smile of humor. And we all have memories, but that is my forever vision of Andrew. As far as, as far as his voice, I better make it a shorter story. We would go down in Boston Pizza for our celebrations, and it'd be very crowded, shoulder to shoulder. There'd be games on TV, there'd be music playing, a lot of people talking, a lot of stuff going on. Kane would be way over in the corner going, yo, yo, yo. If it's real important, yo, 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 yo. <laughs> Four yo's for important stuff. But inevitably, Andrew would work his way in the crowd. He'd end up in front of me. He'd get right in my grill, have the eyes, have the smile. Whenever I do that, I look like an idiot, but Andrew happened to pull it off just perfectly. The big eyes and the smile. he say, Dwight, do you think we can get some nachos? <laughs> and you know, I don't know what it is about that. But it's just it's as simple as that. And we all, have, we all have our different memories of Andrew's voice. And that is mine. And his voice will not be forgotten. I will hear that every time at Boston Pizza and at every celebration. As far as memory that I can relate to everybody about who Andrew was as a person, I, I could go to a, a time when Andrew wasn't even near me. I was on the back deck alone just thinking about hockey, and the thought came to me that um, one day Andrew would lead a group of his friends to take over the coaching of the team from me and my friends. And that is how much we thought of Andrew. And you know, I feel very sad for the, the young people coming up through minor hockey or starting minor hockey, depending on the time they put me out to pasture, that those young fellows will never get to experience that that would have been a very special time in this arena. So as a team, we're here celebrating some of those memories and celebrating the memories that won't be told tonight. But we're also here to say goodbye and move on. And you know, in, in, the, in the confines of our dressing room, 
we do pray to the hockey gods. And those prayers now will take on a whole different tone as Andrew changes teams. You know, and again, I know Andrew's only been on his new team for less than 30 days, but I'm pretty confident he's working his way into the leadership group, and there's no doubt he's taking notes, getting ready to take over. <laughs> you know, our, our hockey prayers to the hockey gods going for, further, you know, will be to Andrew. So we're celebrating, we're uh, saying goodbye, we're moving on. But most importantly, as a team, uh, we're here to remember. And we will certainly be doing our part in that. You know, Andrew was the biggest part of the banners from last year that will be hanging in this arena. And the hockey team has certainly retired Andrew's jersey number 44. It is on display in the entrance to the rink. Andrew's, Andrew's parents, going forward, will be sponsoring a player on the Blazers in recognition and in honor of number 44. And Andrew's Nana will be recognizing a player each year going forward with an award of $500 for the player that best represents Andrew's characteristics. Now, most gratefully, uh, I've been given the task of recognizing that player here tonight. And that player is Matt Berrigan. So Matt, if Matt will come up. Nana gave me an envelope. Nana, would you like Matt to read that envelope? No? Yes. I have not read it, but I know there's a note. She wrote a note. Whoever wins it, she didn't know. She didn't know who's going to win. It's going to be hard writing to read. <laughs> it says, I am so glad that you have been chosen. I can't read it. <laughs> Finally, I get to pretend I'm 19. I'm Matt Berrigan. <laughs> I am so glad that you have been chosen to receive the Andrew Pico Award. May your future be filled with many successes as Andrew would have wished. Signed, Andrew's Nana. Stay here with me for a So as a final act, as Andrew's coach, as he has moved on to hockey god status, which means he's my boss, I would like uh, Matt and maybe one more player to present Andrew's home-worn jersey, number uh, 44, the white jersey, um, to Andrew's parents. But I want the Andrew's parents to stay where they are. The men will bring the jersey to you. So can you grab that jersey? All right, that's where we're leaving it. Don't try to come out of the stands. That'll be there. When, when some people clear, we'll bring it over. If they don't wreck it. 
Now that you've seen it, they're taking it back over where it's safe. <laughs> Thank you.
It's been a long day without you, my friend And I'll tell you all about it when I see you again We've come a long way from where we began Oh, I'll tell you all about it when I see you again When I see you again Damn New. All the planes we flew, good things we have been through Then I'll be standing right here talking to you About another path, I know we love to hit the road and laugh But something told me that it wouldn't last Had to switch up, look at things different, see the bigger picture Those were the days, hard work forever pays Now I see you in a better place Ah. Uh. How can we not talk about family when family's all that we got? Everything I would do, you were standing there by my side And now you gon' be with me for the last it's ride It's been a long day without you, my friend And I'll tell you all about it when I see you again, I see you again. We've come a long way from where we began you know we started. Oh, I'll tell you all about it When I see you again Let me tell you. When I see you again First you both go out 
got your way in the vibe It's feeling strong and was small Turned to a friendship, a friendship turned to a bond And that bond will never be broken The love will never get lost And when brotherhood come first Then the line will never be crossed Established it on our own When that line had to be drawn And that line is what we reach So remember me when I'm gone How can we not talk about family When family's all that we got Everything I went through You were standing there by my side And now you gon' be with me for the last ride Let the light guide your way Yeah Hold every memory as you go And every road you take Without you, my friend And I'll tell you all about it When I see you again We've come a long way From where we began Oh, I'll tell you all about it When I see you again When I see you